My book, Plant Science for Gardeners, has been converted into an audio book. The narrator is David Skalski, and I thought you'd enjoy listening to part of the book and learn more about plant science. What causes flowering? Plants spend most of their effort to grow larger, and only when certain criteria are met do they flower. It is important for a gardener to understand these criteria. Plants need to be large enough to flower. In annuals, this happens very quickly, but some trees might need to be 10 or even 20 years old. Many large oaks do not bloom until they are at least 20 years old. But my dwarf chinkapin oak has acorns on it after only five years from seed. Plants also need to be healthy and have access to enough light. Anything that prevents a plant from growing to its full potential may prevent flowering. Even when all of these criteria are met, the plant still needs certain triggers to flower. One of the most common is day length. We commonly talk about day length, but plants actually sense the duration of darkness, not light. So it is more correct to talk about dark length rather than day length. Plants fall into one of three categories, long night, short night, or night neutral. Chrysanthemums are long night plants that need a dark period of 12 hours or more. This is the main reason they don't flower until fall, when days are shorter and nights are longer. Those plants can be tricked into flowering any time of the year by providing a long night. Roses are night neutral. They start to grow in spring, and once they are large enough, they flower. Some roses are repeat bloomers, and they continue to flower until frost. Others only bloom for a few weeks. The duration of the bloom is determined by genetics. Fruit trees bloom in spring when there is about 12 hours of darkness. In temperate zones, this amount of darkness also happens in fall, but the trees don't bloom then because there is a second trigger involved, called vernalization. These plants need two things to form flower buds, a 12-hour dark period as well as a previous cold period. In order for plants to sense the duration of darkness, they have to be able to measure time. This is a complex process that uses molecules called phytochromes. Far red light changes the phytochromes, which in turn triggers bud initiation. Tropical plants are not exposed to changes in day length, nor to cold periods and must use a different system to control flowering. Science is still working out the specifics, but it seems some tropical plants use the natural cycles of solar radiation. At the equator, radiation intensity peaks when the sun passes directly overhead at the spring and autumn equinoxes and wanes towards the solstices. For example, rubber trees tend to bloom at the same time and have two blooming periods, one in spring and one in fall. Rainfall can be a significant trigger for some plants, Desert plants tend to bloom in spring, but they wait until right after a significant rain event. A flash of light at night. In nature, this process of monitoring darkness works quite well provided the plant gets continuous darkness. Light from the stars or even a full moon is too weak to affect it, but this is not true in our urbanized world. Light from street lights and home lighting can interfere and prevent the plant from getting enough darkness. Christmas cacti are long night plants and normal home lighting is enough to interrupt the dark period, which in turn prevents flowering. Street lights can interfere with flowering of ornamental plants such as pineapple sage. Control of light during the dark period is critical for the flowering of some house plants. Many people are now also adding garden lighting and outdoor home lighting, and these can also interfere with blooming if the light level is high enough and if it is the right wavelength of light. The table below shows how different types of light affect plants. See the downloadable PDF that accompanies this audiobook. Note that it is the red light that is most critical. Most garden LED lights have a low light output that won't affect plants, 
but if you use these, try to get ones with low red light. Lights that are on for only a few hours after dusk are better than ones that stay on all night. Why do plants not flower? Most plants are grown for their flowers, and it is extremely frustrating when they don't flower. There can be many causes, and it can be difficult for a gardener to decipher the problem. The following are some of the more common reasons why plants don't flower. Plants are not mature. Plants prioritize the use of their energy, and reproduction is low on the list. Perennials usually don't flower for several years. Crab apples take seven years, and oaks take several decades. The century plant, agave, needs to reach a certain size before it will bloom. If a plant is not mature, it uses the energy to grow, and there is not much you can do to speed up the process. Incomplete vernalization. Plants that require vernalization need to have a cold period that is long enough as well as a temperature that is low enough, and this varies from plant to plant. Some plants might grow just fine in warmer climates, but might not flower after a warm winter. Many spring bulbs need a period of vernalization. In warm climates, this can be accomplished in a refrigerator. Give them a cold treatment of 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees Celsius, to 48 degrees Fahrenheit, 9 degrees Celsius, for a minimum of 12 weeks. They can then be planted for a spring bloom. You will need to dig them up each fall and repeat the process. Some spring bulbs can be purchased pre-chilled, saving you the trouble of this step. However, if a pre-chilled bulb is left out in warm temperatures for long enough, it will de-vernalize and not bloom. Plant myth. High phosphate grows more blooms. Many gardening experts promote the idea that a high phosphorus level will promote more flowers, but this is a myth. Plants need all of the nutrients to produce flowers and fruits. In particular, there are minimum levels of potassium and nitrogen that are needed for fruit set because they contain higher levels of potassium than other plant parts. Lower levels of it, and even low levels of boron, can prevent fruit set. All parts of the plant need all the nutrients. An excess of one nutrient, like phosphate, does not make the plant grow better, nor does it cause a plant to bloom more. Don't waste your money on bloom booster type products. Winter Kill of Buds Trees and shrubs that bloom early in the year, such as forsythia, lilac, magnolia, and some hydrangea, tend to form their buds in late summer. A particularly cold or wet winter can kill the buds. Even more deadly to buds is a late winter warm spell, followed by very cold temperatures. The warm period wakes up the buds and they start to grow. Once this happens, they are more easily damaged by cold. Some plant groups are very confusing to gardeners, and this includes the hydrangea. There are several different types of hydrangea. Some form buds in fall on old wood, and some in early summer on new wood. The big leaf hydrangea, Hydrangea macrophylla, is very popular and it forms buds in late summer, so it can flower the following spring. It is sold as a zone 5 because the roots and stems are hardy in zone 5. Unfortunately, the buds are not. This means that in zone 5 and even zone 6, buds are killed in winter, leaving gardeners wondering why their plants don't flower. Check out this link to identify the type of hydrangea you have. https colon slash slash www.gardenfundamentals.com slash hydrangea hyphen identification. Some magnolias bloom very early in spring and others later in spring. The former group fails to flower properly in very cold years, while the latter group flowers just fine. Picking the right cultivar can have a big impact on flowering success. Control the fertilizer. Plants receiving too much fertilizer, especially nitrogen, will produce a lot of lush growth, weak stems, and fewer flowers. Too much phosphate can tie up other nutrients like iron and also reduce flowering. 
On the other hand, a low level of nutrients results in poor growth and few or no flowers. If you use synthetic fertilizer, get a soil test so you know what to apply. Alternatively, just top dress with an inch of compost each year, and that will provide enough nutrients for most soils. Poor Growing Conditions Plants that are growing well flower better. Anything that limits plant growth will also affect flowering, and this includes drought, shade, and high or low temperatures. Having said that, some stress might help plants to flower. If an orchid does not flower, I recommend that you stress it a bit. Skip a fertilizer cycle, keep it drier, or give it cooler night temperatures. A cymbidium orchid that does not get a touch of frost won't flower well. Some of these stressors might work, but only for plants that are growing well and are healthy. I have been growing orchids for 30 plus years, and in my experience a bit of stress might work, but a large well-grown orchid that is receiving the right amount of light blooms every year without a stressor. Mast Years Many plants will have a year in which they produce a lot of flowers and follow this with a lean year with few flowers. This is very common with trees. The various types of fruits and nuts produced by trees and shrubs are collectively called mast, and when a particular species produces a lot of mast, it's called a mast year. These mast years are important to ensure offspring, since the amount of food produced in these years is too much for the hungry rodent and bird populations, allowing a good number to germinate. This does mean that flower production will be better in some years, and this can lead to the development of new gardening myths. If you tried some new concoction, maybe weed tea, and you got a lot of flowers, you might incorrectly attribute that to the weed tea. That is why such research always uses controls and is usually carried over for several years. We had a crazy spring in 2020. It got warm quite early, and then we had a very cold spell. I noticed all the spring shrubs bloomed especially well. Magnolias were covered with flowers. The Forsythia were the best in ten years. You might be thinking that the weird spring weather had something to do with this, but remember, most of these buds were formed the previous summer, and their growth is very dependent on plant growth in the year before that. As gardeners, we just don't have the data to explain these events. Just enjoy them and expect fewer flowers next year. Incorrect pruning. I mentioned above that some woody plants produce buds in fall and some in late spring. It is important to know what your shrubs do before you prune. The best time for pruning is late winter, but if you prune spring flowering shrubs at this time, you will remove buds. For this reason, most people prune spring flowering shrubs right after flowering. In the case of lilacs, the new buds start forming a few weeks after flowering is done, so you have a fairly small window in which to do your pruning. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from my book. And if you'd like to learn more about plants, have a look at these videos right here.